Okay, so after almost 11 months, or almost 11 months since I got it, I finally finished my Imperial Knight. And instead of messing around with talking about the project, I'm just going to show you the final stages and then we can move on to the war claims, which I'm really excited about as well. So yeah, this has been a lot of fun, this project. I really, really enjoyed it. It's been very, very challenging to do a lot of the freehand work, which I should have and shouldn't have done at the same time. Transfers are something I've never done before either, so that was a new experience. Just watch what I did, basically. Tell me what you think. If you would improve on any of the parts of the design, let me know in the comments below. I'm kind of excited to see what you would think of this because I'm very, very proud of it. The war glaives are going to be even cooler because they're thematically based on the main knight. And then I'm going to do the basing, kind of create a little vibe out of the three of them. So take a look at what I did. Let me know what you think. Before I could even tell myself that I was close to finishing this model, I knew I had to confront my least favorite part of the entire kit. I, I don't know what it is about Warhammer miniatures, but I just can't abide painting weapons at all. You know, armor, vehicles, terrain, you know, literally anything else is thousands of times more interesting to me than painting weapons, and I can't really seem to pinpoint why that is. Anyway, I decided that I'd go with a slight weathering on these parts, just to, partly to make it more interesting myself, but only to a small extent. Uh, this unit is supposed to be fresh out of the drop fortress, you know, and ready for battle, completely fresh. But it's got some old, you know, venerable tools of destruction at its disposal, and they're not afraid to show that they've got, like, centuries of experience. Most of the weapon painting process as a result revolved around painting uh, with metallics, but because of the red hot effect, which I'm now a little regretful of, honestly, uh, because that was already done, uh, there wasn't a lot of other colouring left to do. Not much in the way of interest in armor surfaces adorned these weapons at all. So I was using, um, basically rushing to get the realism in so that I could move on to the more fun parts. Speaking of more fun parts, the next thing I had to do was finish the burnished gold effect of the carapace lip and the peripheral surfaces of each of the other armor panels on the knees and the arms and stuff. So I took a lot of inspiration from the effect used in a Midwinter Minis Warlord Titan video recently. That involved using a sponge to get a much deeper and more layered effect when using metallic paints. Kind of looks more like realistic metal as well. Now I've done bits of layered metallic painting in the past with brushwork, but I have to say that this brings a much nicer and more realistic look. Even watching these clips back now is interesting to me because allowing that stippled hint of the lower layer to shine through goes a huge distance in terms of contouring the look of the metal surfaces. And I didn't want to ruin the effect of the gold, so for the top layer I used a very small piece of sponge held between the teeth of my snips. Um, I used a gold brush then after that to fill in the areas around the purity seals and the admech insignia. And with the armor metallics finished, put the two halves of the night together as a bit of a teaser for myself to kind of keep me interested and excited for the end result because it was getting pretty exhausting by this point. At last, I pulled together the guts needed to fit the face to the head. Now, I did forget when painting the head that it wouldn't be visible under the faceplate, so I did detail parts of the eyes to the extent that I think they might be some of my best work so far, only to realize that they'd barely be seen when the project was complete. I'll just have to settle, I suppose, for the fact that I know what's under there, and I, I guess you do too. With the head completed though, it felt like time to treat this model like it was a project within sight of completion, so I fitted the pauldrons in the arms and I attached the body to the legs. Later on, I did super glue the arms in a position that I quite liked so that it felt more like a model and less like an action figure. I just kind of feel it was a bit more preferential for me to do that. Aside from minor details and, you know, small parts that I've been avoiding, most of the painting from here on was covering up splatters of gold that had ventured away from their intended destinations. This also required a little bit of freehanding over the top of a transfer, which was about as nerve-wracking as you'd expect. <laughs> uh, but how did I do? Want to see with that? Um, you can let me know in the comments. With nowhere else to turn, it was time to look at the final details. Purity seals, insignias, transfers, you know, things that are basically too small and boring for you to want to see on camera. Honestly, I'm pretty sure I, rush, I rushed through all of this just to get it finished. 
But I do think I got away with it. This has been a long and grueling task. I got this for my birthday in August last year, and it's now July 2022. So that's almost, almost 11 months of work. It was really daunting because the miniature is so much bigger than other ones I've done in the past and has so much more details involved. But ultimately though, it's been a blast to paint and honestly, the learning experience has been fantastic. I'm really, really excited to finish off this whole project with the two flanking armagers and just so excited to see the panoply finished off and, and as a unit together. The reason I'm so excited is because this is a thematic design that I've been working across all three models with and I'm really, 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 really keen to see if I'll be able to pull it off in the end. But how do you think I got on? Was it a good first attempt at an Imperial Knight? You can let me know down below.